Hey, Steve again from Compassionate Credit Repair with today's video. And to be honest, just between you and me, I really hate making these videos. But I guess helping people clean up their credit is way more important than how I look or how annoying this British accent is. So I guess today I'll just crack on with it and stop all the whinging. So Today, we're diving into something a little more structured and, let's be honest, way more important, and that's your credit score. That three-digit number can either open doors to your dream home or slam them shut like a boardroom meeting that's gone terribly, terribly wrong. So today, we're breaking down exactly how that score is calculated. I'll try to keep it sharp and insightful. And yes, there'll be a small amount of humor in it because who says financial education has to be dry, right? Well, okay, so here we go. Your credit score is built from five core components. Think of it a little like the secret source to your financial reputation. The better you know these ingredients, the better you can control the outcome. And trust me, once you understand this, you'll see why it's worth all that particular effort, I promise. So let's start with the heavyweight of the bunch, and that is payment history. This is 35% of your score, folks. It's the foundation. Imagine running a business and forgetting to pay your vendors. How long do you think they keep delivering to you? Well, the answer is not long, right? Well, it's the same with your credit. Late payments, even just one, can send creditors running for the hills. Think of it like reporting a loss on your company's quarterly earnings. Yeah, you can recover, but people will talk and not in a good way. Mm -mm. So, pay on time and everything's smooth. Skip a payment? Suddenly, your credit score is giving you the side eye and wondering if you're the kind of person who doesn't return calls. So, word to the wise, don't ghost your creditors. I'll say that again. Don't ghost your creditors. Now, let's talk credit utilization, which makes up another 30% of your score. Now, this one's a big deal, too. It's all about how much of your available credit you're actually using. It's like running your business with razor-thin profit margins, too much risk, too much stress. If you're using more than 30% of your available credit, well, hmm, creditors start to get nervous. It's, like, it's kind of like telling them, I've got this under control, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so keep that utilization low and you're telling them, look, I've got plenty of room. I don't need this credit. I'm just using it responsibly. It's like showing you have plenty of cash reserves without having to flex them. So don't treat your credit card like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Just because you have the limit well, it doesn't mean you need to consume the whole thing at once or even over time. Now, third thing, onto length of credit history, which accounts for 15% of your score. In this game, age isn't just a number, it's a track record. The longer you've been managing credit, the better. It's like building a solid company over decades instead of just opening a trendy startup. So just like a fine wine, a long credit history shows you've been around, you've weathered some storms, and you've come out of the other side a lot stronger. But here's the kicker. Closing old accounts? Mm, no. That's like hitting the delete key on years of great history. Not very smart at all. Closing an old account just because you don't use it is like throwing away a trophy just because it's gathering dust. Leave it there. It's proof that you've been winning this credit game for years. So, 
The next one is credit mix, and that makes up 10%. Think of this as your ability to handle multiple financial tools at once. Credit cards, mortgages, auto loans. Lenders want to see if you can juggle different types of debt responsibility. It's kind of like financial CrossFit. Are you versatile or are you only good at one thing? I don't think I'm even good at that one thing, by the way. But the more you can handle, the more lenders begin to trust you. It's like if someone only invests in one type of stock. Sure, it's great, but when it's up, but what about diversification? That's the name of the game. Show them you can handle a variety of loans and they'll reward you for it. Finally, new credit. Now that makes up another 10% of your score. This part comes down to how many accounts you've opened recently. Every time you apply for new credit, it's like waving a flag that says, hey, I need more money. And if you're doing it too often, creditors start wondering why exactly. Think of it like dating. If you're asking five people out at the same time, it raises questions. Are they desperate? What's going on here? So spread out your credit 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 inquiries and lenders will see you as someone who's steady and intentional and not someone who's just scrambling for cash. So let's wrap this up now. Payment history, that's your foundation. Pay on time and everything else falls into place. Credit utilization. Keep it low and under control. Show you don't rely on debt. Length of credit history. Let it age and don't touch those old accounts. Credit mix. Diversify. Just like a good investment portfolio and new credit. Be smart and space out those applications. So if you're ready to take control of your credit or you just want someone else to handle the details, that's what we do here at Compassionate Credit Repair. So if you need us, let us help you master this game so you can focus on your financial future. So until next time, keep your credit scores high and your desk organized, not like mine. Have a great day, guys. Take care.